Hi, my name is Hartwood and today we will talk about if you should get a laptop with an MX450 or MX350 or not. We will find out why Nvidia built those GPUs in the first place and what to expect from them compared to entry level gaming GPUs like the 1050 or the GTX 1650 or even the GTX 960M. And before we talk about if you should buy one of these laptops, we will take a look at the pros and the cons of laptops with graphics cards like the MX450. Now on the pro side we definitely have the efficiency of those cards. Because each of them is the most efficient 25 watt mobile GPU of their generation. That means that you can use them very well in small and thin light laptops because they don't um, generate a lot of heat, which usually is a problem in those small units. As a comparison, 25 watt is a wattage that can easily be cooled passively in a desktop PC. And for those 25 watt, they actually have pretty decent FPS, to be honest. Next up is the fact that they actually are faster than integrated graphics, um, especially the MX450 and very especially the DDR6 version of that chip. And I know there might be some laptops with very fast RAM and integrated graphics from AMD or Intel that can be almost as fast as the MX350. But you also have to keep in mind that an integrated graphics chip always uses the regular RAM of the PC or the laptop as VRAM, meaning that in games that need a lot of RAM and VRAM, you will run short of on either of them. And this will not happen with an MX450 or an MX350. And yes, we will talk about the 2GB VRAM problem in a second. And they provide an overall smoother gaming experience because the CPU does not have to run at full load all the time. And the MX450 is actually able to run every game that has been released until late 2020 in a fluid way if you consider 30 FPS on average fluid, of course. In very new and very extreme titles you might have to reduce the resolution to 900p or even 720p if you need more than 30 fps but still the card is able to run everything including stuff like cyberpunk 2077 for example and video and picture editing software for example the adobe suit will highly benefit from a dedicated gpu and to be honest in that case it does not really matter if you choose the mx450 or the mx350 even though the 450 is a bit faster but for video editing and picture editing it does not really matter that much and last but not least those cards even can be overclocked sometimes and undervolted sometimes which is a benefit for some people now on the con side we have first the vram is too small second the vram is too small i'm serious I do understand that Nvidia was using 2GB for the MX250 because that card was not fast enough in 99% of the titles to benefit from um, a bigger VRAM. But especially the MX450 is absolutely fast enough in many titles that you could basically choose high settings, but if you choose those high settings, the VRAM will be full and um, the game will start to stutter, which is a shame because as I said, the car has the power and um, I guess Nvidia made this because they wanted to save money and because they don't want to uh, beat their own entry-level GPUs like the GTX 1050 or the GTX 1650 for that matter. But we really have to face the fact that in some titles and in some graphic settings they are highly held back by the small VRAM. And another con is definitely that they are not future-proof. I mean, I said that the MX450 is able to run Cyberpunk, but it's just able to run it at 30 FPS on very low settings at 720p or 900p, meaning that newer titles that will come out in the next few months and years probably won't be able to run in a fluid way at all, even on the very lowest settings. But of course, that's something that you cannot say for sure, but I'm guessing it's going, to be, it's going to be like this. And of course there will also be newer games that it will be able to run just fine. For example the FIFA series and many eSport titles, Fortnite updates and stuff like this. So it 
does not automatically mean that a new game won't run on those graphic cards. But you just should be aware that you probably won't be able to play very new stuff in the near future. So keep that in mind. Well, if we compare the raw power of those cards to each other and compare them with entry-level GPUs, entry-level gaming GPUs like the 1050 and so on, um, we can sort them like this. First we have the MX350, which is basically exactly as fast as the GTX 960M. Um, and they both are slower than the MX450 DDR6 version, which is around 30 to 40 percent slower. Um, but this card is exactly or almost exactly as fast as the GTX 1050. Um, and this again is slower than the GTX 1650, which is slower as the GTX 1650 Ti. That actually means, as I said before, that the MX 350 is basically, basically identical performance-wise as the GTX 960M. But both cards are outperformed by around 30% by the MX 450 with DDR6 and the GTX 1050, which again have about identical performance. The GTX 1650 and the 1650 Ti are still noticeably faster than the MX 450, especially on settings that need more than 2 GB of VRAM. And so my guess is that in the future the MX 550 will be about as fast as a GTX 1650. And it will hopefully have 4 GB of RAM at least. NVIDIA, alright? Let's do this. I know you can. By the way, I have a lot of videos in which I compare those graphics cards side by side to each other, so make sure to check them out and I will link some of them in the description below. Now let's try to make a conclusion. In which scenarios should you buy a laptop with an MX450, 350, 250 or whatever? The first scenario. You mainly want to buy a laptop for gaming and you think that the MX laptops might be a good deal or maybe cheaper than real gaming netbooks. And the only reason you buy a laptop is because you want to carry it around from time to time or because you don't have a monitor and no keyboard. And the conclusion is definitely no. In that case I would highly advise against buying an MX GPU laptop. Because you will get much better price performance out of an entry level gaming laptop with a GTX 1050, 1650 or 1650 Ti. We are talking about less than $1,000 here. And good deals with those graphic cards, especially the 1050 and 1650, start around $650 these days. Depending on where you live, of course. The second scenario. You need the high mobility of a small and thin laptop, but you also casually play games. Or you mainly play older games or eSport titles that don't need much performance, like for example Rocket League, CSGO, League of Legends, Fortnite, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Minecraft, etc. And the conclusion is definitely yes. You should probably get a laptop with an MX graphics card. If you favor size and mobility, just go for it. Third scenario. You want a laptop for university or work and you need to either do stuff like video editing, picture editing, CAD or CAD or light 3D rendering stuff. And the answer is conclusion is probably yes. In that case those laptops might actually be the sweet spot for you. Go for it. Next scenario. If you want a gaming laptop that does not look like a gaming laptop. And the conclusion is definitely no. Because these days there are actually many, especially entry level gaming netbooks or notebooks that don't look like gaming hardware at all. The fifth scenario. You don't plan on gaming, 3D rendering, video editing, CAD cut, and you just want a laptop for streaming and schoolwork and your new or university work and regular office stuff. The conclusion is definitely no. You're probably wasting money. I encourage you to find a laptop without an MX GPU if money is an issue at all. If it's not, just buy whatever you like best though. And the last scenario. In your country, MX laptops are way cheaper than laptops with a GTX 1050 or 1650 GPU. And the conclusion probably is yes. Well, that sucks. Um, but I guess that in that case you don't have much of a choice, do you? But make sure to check out all the hardware shops from your country and 
to check all the hardware shops online that you could order. Try to use price comparison websites and look for keywords like GTX 1650 laptop. Try AliExpress as they ship worldwide and offer GTX 1650 laptops for under $1000 and consider buying used and consider buying on eBay from sellers in Europe or the US. And before we are done today, I've collected all those conclusions and made a small overview for you. So make sure to hit the pause button and read that again uh, to find yourself in those conclusions. Oh, and last but not least, let's talk about which CPU you probably want to combine in a laptop with one of those GPUs. And well, to make it quick, as of today, it does not really matter that much. But Intel's i7 and AMD's Ryzen 7 will be more future-proof and you will likely be able to use those laptops a little bit longer as the CPU won't become a bottleneck before the GPU becomes one anytime soon. So I really hope that this helped a bit in deciding which laptop to buy. If you have any questions, please make sure to um, ask them in the comments section. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you loved it, subscribe to the channel to see more stuff like this. Um, that would help a lot. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay healthy. Bye bye and cheers.